Today, I will be talking about mindfulness, what it means to me and what I can communicate to you about it and where I tend to have difficulties with it myself so that you may recognize that you're not alone in this journey. Rather, like Ram Das put it, we're all just walking each other home, which is a beautiful way to acknowledge that we are all alive and aware momentarily on this plane of existence, a very unique plane of existence at that and as far as we know, it will end with our dropping off of the body, but until then, we are all in this together. Well, first, there is this exercise where the lecturer asks the crowd three different questions. Raise your hand if you know what mindfulness is. Raise your hand if you don't know what mindfulness is. Raise your hand if you are not sure what mindfulness is. And then the people will lift their hand for whichever of the three corresponds to them. And then the lecturer will ask, do you know, you know what mindfulness is? Do you know you don't know what mindfulness is? Do you know you aren't sure what mindfulness is? Well, he'll say, that's what mindfulness is, to know. If you lift your arm, and keep it in the air, a stinging sensation will arise. And your job is not to say, this aches. Your task as a visitor or astronaut on this plane is to know that there is a stinging sensation there. That it is not necessarily good or bad for existence. It's purely neutral, loving, accepting of all of that is. Not judging, no nothing, just being, to know that you are, that's it, I am, you must say to yourself, and know that you for a minute are, know this, and soon you will arrive at your natural state, but what is one's natural state, you see, right now, you are like a vase in an infinite ocean, if existence was nothing but a never-ending ocean, and you were to add a vase to this water, the water would follow into the vase. The vase would become, in some sense, one with this infinite ocean. For this water is all that is. This is what we are. That infinite ocean, and I am saying infinite here. And this infinite ocean is referred to as God, or the Divine Mother, Jah, Being, etc., well, now that we know how to be mindful and what our absolute natural state is, which is the infinite state of being, I would like to share with you where I tend to struggle with the practice. My biggest issue is that sometimes I don't know what to know or get too hung up on labeling things so that I may know what to be mindful of and should probably work on labeling less. When I stare at a tree in the distance, my bad eyesight combined with the chaotic shape of the leaves irritates me because I don't know what to be mindful of when I'm staring at the tree. Although, now that I mention it, I should probably know that I don't know what to be mindful of when looking at a tree. When I'm walking home or to school and I have to cross the street, everything in my body tells me to look at the vehicle waiting at the stop sign, but my ego doesn't allow it because what an atrocity it would be to make eye contact with another being and risk making them or me uncomfortable, if even for only two to three seconds. And so my vision goes blurry, and because I'm thinking about how I should react instead of knowing that I am there, I forget I am incapable or am incapable of knowing or get irritated or overwhelmed or disappointed at myself for being such a caught up loser. And then I just keep walking as mindfully as the grace of God might allow me to. It is at these intersections that I get so hung up on everything that's not important. Maybe this isn't too related to what I am talking about, but I thought I might mention it nevertheless. I heard Ram Dass say that one can be tuned into multiple planes of existence at once. So perhaps crossing the street. It's a matter of knowing that there is this stinging sensation of not knowing what to be mindful of, but 
that I don't necessarily have to identify with this plane, why don't I instead identify with the plane that fathoms me being the bird perched up on the electrical wiring by the last shrubs? So far, we don't know why or who put the vase in the water. It just happens to be in the water. And that is what it means to be human, to be. Up until one becomes decrepit enough to leave to sh that the body shuts down. Whilst alive, one needs to be mindful so as to not get caught up in all the phony illusions that have been sprung for the sake of maintaining what Dr. Jordan B. Peterson tends to refer to as the miraculous improbability of the structure and order of the West. If one is mindful of merely being instead of going around identifying oneself with every other illusion that comes across her path, one won't take hateful actions and or speech too serious. You will understand that this person is beyond being a vase. This person is the infinite ocean. They didn't choose to be a vase. They can't help that they've been taught nothing but to identify themselves as the vase. And to recognize this is to understand like Buddha did. And although all these bases are unique, they are all part of this infinite ocean. It is said that Buddha was merely a being with a great capacity for understanding. And finally, as to mindfulness pertaining to everyday life, one needn't necessarily drop out like Timothy Leary might have suggested. But rather like Kurt Vonnegut's uncle Alex used to say to him, and Kurt Vonnegut was tender enough to say to us, I urge you to please notice when you are happy and exclaim or murmur or think at some point, if this isn't nice, I don't know what is.